Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to get into Genesis, the 22nd chapter in the 18th verse, as it reads, speaking to Abraham, okay, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou has obeyed my voice. Okay, and this was um, after Abraham passed the test, you know, where he was um, told to sacrifice Isaac but what happened is you know um, it was a test and he was getting ready to do it and as you read in this chapter okay a ram all right or a lamb showed up and was ultimately caught by his leg and or his, his horns in a uh, thicket and that would be used uh, as the sacrifice foretelling the sacrifice of Hamashiach Yahawashai Okay, but after, you know, Abram or Abraham, you know, passed that test, okay, the promise was reassured unto him, as we read here in uh, Genesis 22 and 16, now it says, this is what the angel of the Lord said, and said, by myself have I sworn, saith Yahweh, for because thou hast done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thine only son. Now, this is speaking to Abraham. Okay. Now, how many children did Abraham have? He had eight children. So why is Isaac, okay, being likened unto his only son? All right. Which, as we uh, get into the scriptures, all right, in Isaac would the seed be called. Now, this word only in the uh, Hebrew all right, is Yahayad, okay? Only one, solitary, only unique, okay? Only begotten son, all right, which, um, let's get the root word, okay? So this was the, the chosen son whom the promise of inheritance to that land, rights to that land, you know, which grants the sons of God access back to the Garden East and Eden, all right? That was a promise given unto Abraham, passed down to Isaac, which was likened unto his only begotten, Yahad, to join, to be joined, to be united, and we would be united, all right, back to the Heavenly Father, okay, um, through this promise, but ultimately through that seed, which points to Yahweh Shai, okay, so let's read this again. Um going back to uh, Genesis the uh, 22nd chapter and the 16th verse and it says this is what the angel of the Lord told to Abraham and said by myself have I sworn saith the Ahawah because thou hast done this thing he was getting ready to offer up his son Isaac as a sacrifice but when you read it in the book of Hebrews the reason he was going to do that all right, is because he had faith that Isaac would be raised from the dead being that the Heavenly Father promised him, you know, with a uh, blessing and said that blessing would be continued through your seed, Isaac. Then he's faced with sacrificing Isaac. All right. And <laughs> he was getting ready to do it with 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 the faith that, you know, the Lord was going to raise him from the dead. And that's in the book of uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, if you want to read that. But that's not what this lesson is about. All right. And that ultimately was uh, the faith of Abraham. OK, which the elect would be justified by faith. All right. And the elect, as a matter of fact, let's get that real quick. May, may as well not withhold that one. Let's get uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter. When we deal with the heathen being justified by faith and being tied to Abraham. OK, because the, the elect. OK, which would leave off from that heathen state. The Gentiles will be justified by their faith in the message, you know, of the resurrection that was being taught by the disciples, the apostles. Now, this is the book of Hebrews 11. 
and 17. Okay, let's read this in the NLT. It says, <clears throat> It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, which Abraham had eight children. Why would Isaac be likened unto his only son? <laughs> All right. Even though God told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. So when you look at the position Abraham was in, here it is. He's told that, you know, it would be through Isaac that this promise that I'm giving you will be passed through who would eventually have Jacob. OK, but then he's told to sacrifice him. OK, and when you when you deal with the faith that Abraham had, it says Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, the most high was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. OK, and that would be through Yahweh Shai. All right. Which we'll uh, touch on that. But um. Let's read this again. This is Genesis 22 and 16. I started at 15. And the angel of Yahweh came to Abraham out of the heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, which is Isaac, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. Keep all of these things in mind. And as the sand which is upon the seashore and in thy seed and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. All right. Which um, the our enemies have possession of the promised land. OK. And right now they have possession. All right. Of of uh, particular parts of the promised land. All right. And the earth is in their hands. You see. And through Yahweh Shai. OK, all of our enemies are going to be taken down. It says, and in thy seed shall all of the nations all right, of the earth be blessed because thou has obeyed my voice. So what Christians and a lot of these weird Israelites like to do is say, well, right here, this promises salvation to the heathen. OK, now, when you deal with uh, the uh, promise, as a matter of fact, let's get the book of. Well, when you deal with the, the, the heathen in the kingdom of heaven, let's get Genesis 27 real quick. All right. Dealing with uh, the blessing that was given unto Jacob. Uh, Genesis 27 and 28. This is the blessing that was given unto Jacob when you read this. All right. This is on down the line because the promise went from Abraham, Isaac and to Jacob. And this is what Jacob was blessed with. OK. Genesis 27 and 27 or 27 and 28. Therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Okay, riches. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. See, the nations are going to bow down to Jacob. Be Lord over thy brethren. All right, the Edomites, Esau. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. The Edomites are going to bow to the Israelites. This is a, a, a blessing put up on Jacob. You see. Curse be everyone that cursed thee. And blessed be he that blessed thee. So in the kingdom of heaven, when the heathen follow the ways of righteousness, they will be blessed. But when it comes to the promise of inheritance. The kingdom of heaven, the second covenant, the new bodies, they have no part in that. All right. Another scripture. Tobit, the 13th chapter. And the 11th verse, many nations shall come from far to the name of the most high God, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, with gifts in their hands, even gifts to the king of heaven. All generations shall praise thee with great joy. So the heathen are going to praise us. They're going to uh, be in subject to us. OK, and when they keep our ways, they will be blessed. You see, but when they when they don't. Uh, the book of Zechariah, the 14th chapter, foretells them being punished when they don't keep our ways, not being blessed. Cursed are all they which hate thee and blessed shall all be which love thee forever. So in the kingdom of heaven, the heathen will be blessed. 
all right, to be in subject to the Israelites, all right, but they will have to be obedient to the law, statutes, and commandments as that's what they will be taught. That will be the standard, all right, in the kingdom of heaven. They will have to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. They will be subject to the Israelites. So they will be blessed in the sense of, let's get Revelation uh, 22. All right, and we teach this. We don't shy away from this. All right, in the kingdom of heaven, though the heathen will never be in the second covenant, if they keep our ways, all right, and the fact that we will be ruling over, as the scriptures say, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, all right, the the uh, you know the people uh, mourn when the wicked bear rule. See, so when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Because, uh, you know, although it's going to come with a rod of iron and judgment, when it's all said and done, the earth will be renewed, refreshed. They will see the importance of the Israelites ruling. This is Revelation 22 and 1. And he showed me a pu pure river, all right, of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb. Okay, the throne of David. All right, the pure water representing the ways of righteousness. The law shall go forth of Jerusalem. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, okay, which is going to extend forth from the, the righteous under Yahweh Shai, the, the 144,000, the large multitude. Okay, the, 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 the pure doctrine is just going to flow throughout the four corners of the earth, which b bear. Twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healings of the nations. See, the trees will be for the healings of the nations. So the nations will be healed and they will have, you know, blessings in a sense that if they keep the ways of righteousness, you know, they, you know, they'll be in our good graces. You see, but they will be subjects. They will be servants. They will be handmaids. They will not receive the blessing of inheritance rights to the promised land. You see, and when you deal with this scripture, as we're getting ready to show you, Genesis 22 and 18, and in thy seed shall all of the nations of the earth be blessed. We're going to show you that this is dealing with the Israelites. All right. And that seed, as we're going to show you, is Yahweh Shai, because the, 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 the seed that will be. You know, as the sand of the sea and multiplied as the stars of heaven, all right, which is, you know, as the sand is upon the seashore, you see, that sea will be spread throughout the four corners of the earth via a curse, as we're going to show you, okay? But ultimately, through Yahweh Shai, okay, uh, the, we will be gathered back, okay? And it will be through faith. And you would have to have the faith of Abraham. Now, when you get Romans, the ninth chapter in the third verse, this is Paul speaking. It says, for I wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. See, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption, you know, being brought back to the most high through Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, because that's what Yahweh Shai all right, his sacrifice, you know, we, we now are adopted back to the most high. The word is Huithosina, all right? It says, let just get to the point, adoption of sons, the relationship which God was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites and preference to all other nations, all right? The nature and condition of the true disciples of Yahweh Shai, who by receiving the spirit of God into their souls became the sons of God. As many as received him, all right, they became the sons of God. But through Yahweh Shai, the Israelites will be adopted back to the Most High, will be brought back to the Most High. Okay? And why would we need to be brought back? The only nation that was, you know, ever in covenant with him was the Israelites, all right, who broke that covenant and needed a way back. Yahweh Shai was that way back. Okay, so the, the, to the Israelites pertaining the adoption and the glory and the covenants, the first and second covenant, the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers? All right. And of whom as concerning the flesh, Yahweh Shai came, 
who was overall blessed forever. Amun. Let's get this in the NLT. All right. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are their ancestors, and Yahweh himself was an Israelite as far as his human nature is concerned, and he is the power, the one who rules over everything and is worthy of eternal praise. Okay? So Yahweh Shai was an Israelite who came from the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through Jacob's fourth son, Judah. Okay, so when you read this, Genesis 22 and 18, and in thy seed, all right, which eventually that seed would be Yahweh Shai. Now, when you look up this word seed, okay, is Zarai, okay, offspring. All right. One of the offsprings of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All right. Will be the one. All right. That would gather all of these, this, these different. All right. Descendants of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob, as we'll show you back. OK. Semen Viral, offspring, descendants, posterity. All right. A practitioner of righteousness, which Yahweh Shai is that practitioner of righteousness. All right. One who administers. Okay, he's that practitioner of righteousness in a figurative sense. Okay, he is the seed. All right. As the scriptures say, it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, which is descendant of Abraham through Isaac, through Jacob. So when it says and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now, a lot of people say, well, we're, well right here. Okay, that nations. All right, is Gawaya, which sometimes when you hear the word Goyim or Gawaya, okay, you think of a natural, actual heathen that's not of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which there are times in which this word is used for the actual heathen, but everything must be used in its context, just like the word uh, uh, Gentile, as it means ethnos, ethnicities, those who are of the same ethnicity. Sometimes the word can be used for actual heathen. All right. But when it's dealing with the promise and those who would go <clears throat> and be scattered, you know, the, throughout the four corners of the earth. OK. And the the, uh, the disciples went and taught them the ethnicity, the, those of the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Now, when you get this. All right. Nation. People usually of non Hebrew people. Right. Of descendants of Abraham, Israel, and the proof that this word, all right, is used to describe the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's get Genesis, the 12th chapter, in the first verse. Okay. Salakia, Gen no, Genesis 1. Let's get Genesis, the 12th chapter. All right. And um, to a lot of people, this is boring. But um, for those of you who are sincere about the word. All right. This is a uh, life to you. OK. Genesis one or twelve and one. Now, the Lord said unto Abram before his name was changed to Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and to a land that I will show thee and I will make thee a great nation. And will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. See? Now, when you read this scripture, he's going to make Abraham a great nation. It's the same word. Okay? Uh, all right, Gawaya. Okay? All right, and the descendants of Abraham, as we're going to show you, are going to be counted through Isaac and Jacob. All right, let's go back here to Romans, the ninth chapter. Okay, and let's read the, the, uh, the third verse, Genesis 12 and 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And that's going to happen. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. All the families of the earth. Let's look up this word families. All the families of the earth. Ma, sha, pa, ha. Okay, clan, family, tribe, nation, people, all right, species, okay, aristocrats. <laughs> Let's look up this word aristocrats, okay, kind, aristocrats, 
a class of people. What? What the hell? Aristocrats. Salakia. A family. A member of an aristocracy. Descendant. We got a nobleman. Lord. Peer. Pyrrhus. All right. Let's see if we can get a uh, better definition in the etymology online. Okay. Aristocrat. Aristocrat is one having high rank in a community. Okay. Or revolution, aristocracy stylish nobility which is the israelites okay the aristocrats are the israelites okay that's the families of the earth okay ship ship all right sweet bear scrape to be laid bare all right shapah Slave girl, maid, servant, addresser, speaker, humility, which Israel is likened unto a woman, clan, family, tribe, species, kind. So it all goes back, but it's speaking of the Israelites. Okay, let's read this again. Genesis 12 and 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, what is the family? All right, let's get Amos, the third chapter. What is the family, all right, which Yahweh Bashim Yahushah is dealing with in the Bible? Let's get Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt, saying, You have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquity. All right. Now, let's go back to Romans, the ninth chapter. Okay, so to the Israelites pertaineth the adoption, you know, being brought back to the Heavenly Father. That's what that blood of Yahweh was shed for. Right. The covenants, the glory, the giving of the law, the service of God and the promises. We always deal with the promised or the promised land that that land, as we're getting ready to show you, was promised unto Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and their, their descendants out of that lineage. Whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh, Yahweh Shai came. He came in the flesh for the Israelites, who was overall, all right, God blessed forever. Amen. All right. Not as though the word of the Most High have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Okay. It's all about the elect, that remnant that's going to be called. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are their children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. All right. And that's tied to a particular obedience, a particular way, <laughs> belief in the resurrection and everything that we have uh, been talking about. You see, so neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, when you get Genesis, the 17th chapter. OK. Real quick, as as Abraham was given that promise. Okay, Genesis, uh, let's get Genesis uh, 13 and 14. This is Genesis 14, all right, and 13 and 14, it says, And the Lord said unto Abram, after Lot was separated from him, Lift up thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, all right, and to thy seed forever, all right? And to thy seed forever. So to thee will I give it. This promise. To thee will I give it. And to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. So that a man. If a man can number the dust of the earth. Then shall thy seed also be numbered. See. So this is the promise that was given. Alright. Unto Abraham. Now as we read. Genesis the 17th chapter just to get to the point and we'll get some other precepts Genesis the 17th chapter all right and let's get seven 
Let's start at uh, seven and f- five. Neither shall thy name be called Abram anymore, but thy name should be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, a father of many nations. Which as we'll, we'll show you, all right, out of Jacob, out of, out of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will come many nations and kings. So the tribes themselves are likened unto nations, as we're going to show you. And in the seed, in thy seed, which points to Yahweh Shai, will all of the nations, will all of the families of the earth be blessed. And we'll, we'll bring it home in just a minute, but we wanted to make these few points before we bring it on home. So it says, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. And this is the same thing that was told to Jacob in Genesis, the 35th chapter. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land where thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, the promised land for an everlasting possession and will be their God. OK, so how will this 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 blessing be passed down as you read this? Okay, well, let's get to the point. Because Abraham, this is before he was told to offer up Isaac. Isaac wasn't even born yet, had a son named Ishmael. That was his firstborn son, right? So so the Lord wanted to pass down that blessing that we just read. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's get... Genesis 17 and 15 because he had that um, he had Ishmael by his maidservant Hagar okay she was a slave woman a concubine okay a, a, a wife right um, through bondage okay meaning she's a conquered nation she's a nation that's beneath you all right but you take wives of that nation and she will be a, a slave woman a concubine that's who he had Ishmael by. OK, but right here, Genesis 17 and 15. And God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give thee a son of her also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be the mother of many nations. OK, and those many nations, as we're going to show you, is the Israelites that will come out of Isaac and Jacob. She shall be the mother of many nations. Kings of people shall be of her. All right. Through Isaac. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born to him that is a hundred years old and shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear. And Abraham said unto God, oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Just pass the, the blessing down to Ishmael. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son. Indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. These are all promises that will not be altered. You see, this promise is only to the children of Israel of inheritance rights to that land, which the children of Israel would eventually be as the sand of the sea and in, in, in number that cannot be measured. OK, but a remnant will be brought back. Through the grace and mercy of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, to be heirs to the promise to that land. Okay? So Yahweh Shai is that seed, as we're getting ready to show you, that's gonna what? Bless, all right, this 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 great number and multitude of, of, of nations which will come out of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and will be through a remnant. Okay? So that uh, through Isaac I will make a covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. All right. I know you love your son. Behold, I have blessed him and made him fruitful and multiplied him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begat and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. OK, so the covenant. All right. Of promise to the inheritance rights to that land would be established with Isaac. And as we'll show you, that was eventually passed down, all right, through Jacob. 
Okay. Point blank period. Okay. So you have Abraham receiving the promise. Now we see Isaac. All right. And then what was told to Jacob? Let's get another one with Isaac in Genesis 26. Okay. Genesis, the 26th chapter. Genesis, the 26th chapter and the uh, third verse. This is what was told to Isaac. Sojourn in this land and I will be with thee and I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed will I give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and I will give unto thy seed all these countries and then thy seed which would eventually come out of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And we just showed you that many nations are going to come out of Isaac out of what Sarai who had Isaac. See, so in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Okay. Let's go jump to 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake which ultimately there was a promise given unto Abraham. Okay, so let's go back to Romans, the ninth chapter. Okay, Romans 9 and 6. Not as though the word of the Most High have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. All right, the seed will be accounted by those who are of the faith of Abraham. Okay. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, just like Ishmael was, are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. As it says in the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter, all right, as it's given the similitude of Hagar being the bondwoman, all right, and Sarah being the free woman, all right, which is a similitude, you know, the law and everything like that, which you can read that, which we did a lesson on that. Um, but this is Galatians 4 and 28. Now, we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of the promise. See, the children of the promise are counted through Isaac. All right. As it says in the book of Galatians, the uh, third chapter. OK. And Isaac shall thy seed be called. OK. Now, and we'll go go there, but um, let's get let's go back to Romans, the ninth chapter. OK, Romans nine and seven, neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called who had Jacob. OK, and Esau, but the blessing went to Jacob. That is they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of the most high, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. And who was that promise given to? OK, the Israelites, but we know it's going to be a remnant. All right. For this is the word of promise. At this time, Sarah shall have a son. Not only this, but when Rebecca. All right. Sarah had Isaac. OK. Isaac met Rebecca and married her. Rebecca had who? Jacob and Esau. So this is a, he's breaking down the promise. And not only this, but when uh, Rebecca also conceived. All right. By one, even our father, Isaac. For the children not being yet born, neither having done good or evil, speaking of Jacob and Esau. All right. And what does the scripture say? Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated because the promise was passed down through Jacob. You see? And let's get that. Let's get Genesis 21 and 28. And we'll bring it all home. Just a minute. Genesis 21 and 28. Let's see here. Or Genesis 27 and 28, Salakia. Genesis 27 and 28. Okay, Jacob, this is dealing with Jacob now. We showed you J uh, Abraham and Isaac. Genesis 27 and 28. Therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down unto thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. We read that already. OK, we read that already. So that, that's the blessing that's coming unto Jacob. OK, let's get the very next chapter. 
All right, Genesis 28, which I believe we read this as well. But look what's told to Jacob. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Okay, I'll start at 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. This is speaking to Jacob. That was a promise. So when you deal with the promise, it's the promised land, right? Which there's much more that comes with it. But the purpose is that we're going to return to that land. Which gives us access back to the, the garden east in Eden. So it's already promised back to us. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed. Okay, because the promise was given unto Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in thee and in thy seed, which is Yahweh Shai. <laughs> shall all the families of the earth be blessed so all of these israelites that are scattered abroad to the the, the west the east the north and the south are going to be blessed how let's get isaiah the 43rd chapter let's get isaiah 43 real quick okay isaiah the 43rd chapter and the sixth verse let's start at <laughs> man this is a israel is going to be redeemed that's what this chapter is dealing with israel being redeemed isaiah 43 and 4 since thou was precious in my sight all right thou has been honorable when i have loved thee therefore will i give men for thee and people for thy life the descendants of abraham isaac and jacob fear not for i am with thee i will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west and I will say to the north, give up and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yeah, I have made him. OK, so the, the, the Yahweh Shai, as is uh, read in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. OK, through his sacrifice, OK, through that blood. We're guaranteed to be brought back to the most high and have our sins covered. OK, being justified by faith outside of being justified by the law. OK, this is Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That's the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob which would be spread about the west and the east and the north. And why would they be spread about? Well, you have to go to the prophecies. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 64 gives you a clue. Deuteronomy 28 and 64, that's one scripture. It said one of the curses, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. All right. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Okay, we will be made like unto heathen. We will be made uncircumcised. But through faith, okay, as we'll show you, uh, the the uh, these scattered Israelites will be brought back through faith in who? Yahweh Shai. So he is the seed in which the families of the earth would be blessed. Mm hmm. You see? So. I mean, and that's just one scripture. I mean, there's so many scriptures dealing with the Israelites. We're going to be scattered. We're going to be scattered among the nations. Okay. <laughs> the book of Nehemiah. All right. When we, you know, went back to build the temple after the Babylonian captivity, that was a result of a scattering. Okay. We're scattered. We're scattered people. But the, the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob are the ones who are scattered so let's go back here okay and let's get uh we'll get a let's see here we'll go there in a minute let's get uh galatians 3 and 15 let's read this in the uh nlt okay genesis 3 and 15 dear brothers and sisters here's an example from everyday life 
just as no one can set aside or amend an irrevocable agreement, this is the case. That covenant is irrevocable. The agreement of the promise, okay, that was given unto Abraham, okay, is unrevocable, all right? It, it can't be changed. It can't be altered. You see, a lot of people think because the Israelites broke the first covenant and were cursed that ultimately that takes, you know, the away the, 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 the promise. No, the promise was given unto Abraham, Isaac and Jacob before we received that first covenant. OK. God gave the promises to Abraham and his child, who was Isaac. And notice that the scriptures doesn't say to his children, Ishmael wasn't a part of that. His other seven children weren't a part of that. Midian, you know, they weren't a part of that. OK. And notice that the scripture doesn't say to his children as if it meant many descendants. Rather, it says to his child. And that, of course, means Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is that seed. All right. The descendant of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob that came from Judah. All right. That will redeem the sons of God back to the most high, back to that immortal estate. OK, through him. All right. As the scriptures say uh, to him, show the Gentiles seek. Let's get that in the book of Isaiah. The 11th chapter. And I'm just going in the spirit. So, uh, you know, bear with me. Isaiah 11. OK. And 10. And that day there should be a root of Jesse. Now, who's Jesse? You should be able to answer that. Jesse's the father of David. OK. The root of Jesse which is Yahweh Shai, the descendant of <laughs> Jesse would eventually come. I mean, uh, Yahweh Shai would come out of the loins and lineage of David. So in that day, there should be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. He would be the one that we would look to. Let's look up this word ensign. Okay. All right. Nas, a nasa, something lifted up, a standard, okay, signal, pole, ensign, banner, sign, rallying point, signal. He's the banner, just as the 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 the, the um the brass serpent was put on the pole, okay, as the scriptures say, if the son of man be lifted up. Forget what I said. All men shall look unto him. Hold up. No, 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 no. <laughs> Son lifted. This is a good one. Genesis 3 and 14. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Okay. He's the one that we are to look to. To him would the Gentiles seek. As we're going to show you the, the, you know, the through faith and the message, the Gentiles look to Yahweh Shai. And were healed just as we have. Let's see here. John 8 and 28 then Yahweh Shai said unto him when you have lifted up the son of man then shall you know I am he I'm the one I'm that seed <laughs> all right that it was spoken of I'm the one that's going to bring the Israelites back to the heavenly father through through him we have forgiveness of sins through him we have grace and that I do nothing of myself but as my father have taught me who's the father the, the, the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob John 12 and 32 and if i be lifted up from the earth it should be red letter all right will draw all men unto me okay then he said signifying what death he should die you know that death that blood all right will be what we look to for a way back to the father he would be that perfect sacrifice the people answered him and and, and what was isaac supposed to be he was supposed to be sacrificed OK, but the Lord was testing Abraham 
But that was all a foretelling of what was going to happen through Yahweh Shai. Okay, who was raised from the dead after that sacrifice. It says, the people answered him, we have heard out of the law that the most that, that the, the, the Messiah abided forever. How sayest thou the son of man must be lifted up? Who is this son of man? All right, and that's speaking of Yahweh Shai. He's the one that was going to be lifted up. So going back to this prophecy, okay, in Isaiah the 11th chapter, in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, and to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. So people see Gentiles and they lose their mind. All right, which the Gentiles, as you go into the scriptures, would be a no people, but brought back, all right, through Yahweh Shai. Okay? Justified by their faith. And then it goes to the restored remnant. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set again, all right, his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which should be left, all right, from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, all right, Yahweh Shai, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. All right, and this fulfills what was told to Jacob. Genesis 28 and 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the east, the west, the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Let's go back to Galatians, the third chapter. Okay. In the 16th verse, God gave the promises to Abraham and his child and notice that it, the scripture doesn't take to his children as if it meant many descendants, but rather it says to his child. All right. Which was Isaac. And that, of course, means Hamashiach. Okay. This is what I'm trying to say. The agreement God made with Abraham could not be canceled. All right. 430 years later, when God gave the law to Moses, all right, who uh, uh, God, all right, God will be breaking the promises. So the fact that we broke the law of Moses, that doesn't cancel the promise that was made to Abraham, all right, which was passed down to Isaac and Jacob and fell upon the lot of the 12 tribes of Israel. For if the inheritance of the promised land could only be received by the keeping of the law, then it would not be the result of accepting God's promise. But God graciously gave it to Abraham as a promise. Why then was the law given? It was given alongside the promise to show the people their sins and their need for Yahweh Shai. And who was the law given to the Israelites? See, the law was given to, to, so that we can know how bad we needed Yahweh Shai, man. <laughs> so that we can have faith and be justified by belief. That's how the Lord wanted it done. But the law was designed to last only until the coming child who was promised. <laughs> Which is Yahweh Shai. Okay, God gave his law through angels to Moses, who was the mediator between God and the people. Who's the people? The Israelites, not all the people. But as you keep reading, as you keep reading, now a mediator is helpful if more than one party must reach an agreement. But God, who was one, did not use a mediator when he gave the promises to Abraham. Is there a conflict then between God's law and and God's promises? Absolutely not. If the law could give us new life, we would be made right with God by uh, obeying it. And we couldn't. But the scriptures declare that we are all prisoners of sin. So we receive God's promises of freedom only by belief in Yahweh Shai. So it's all about faith. OK. And I mean, we can keep reading this chapter, but I want to uh, jump to a few points. It's all about faith in Yahweh Shai. That would be the seed that 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 family would look to to be blessed. OK, and and, and, and let's get uh, <laughs> again, let's get Genesis 35. Going back to uh, Jacob, we went to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. and We always get this one. 
Okay. As a matter of fact, hmm, let's see here. Hmm. Let you know what? Let's get Genesis twenty-eight and fourteen one more time, and then we'll we'll go here. We'll go there in a minute. Let's get Genesis twenty-eight and fourteen. Spirit's telling me to do this real quick. I want to get these few scriptures. Then we'll close it out. Genesis 28 and 14. This is what was told to Jacob. 13. Let's read it again. All right. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land where thou liest. All right. To thee will I give it and to thy seed after thee. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad the, to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. See? Now, from there, let's go to the book of Zechariah 8 and 7 real quick. Let's get Zechariah 8 and 7. The coming peace and prosperity to Zion, the Israelites. Okay? Let's start at, man, and this is the blessing that's going to come through Yahweh Shai. I start at three. Thus said the Lord, I am turned unto Zion and I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem should be called a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord, the holy mountain, the, the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Okay. Thus said the Lord of hosts, there shall yet be old men and old women dwelling in it streets of jerusalem and every man with his staff in his hand for every very age and the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. this is a foretelling of what's coming this is what we're gonna be doing <laughs> you know you're gonna have those who've been on the earth longer you're gonna have the the the, the newborns the children playing in the streets thus said the lord of hosts if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant that's that promise we're going to be brought back to that land. See, the land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As a matter of fact, before we finish that, let's get Ezekiel 37. <laughs> so there's no way around it. And you dudes who are, you, you clowns who left Boston, you, 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 you guys who are trying to make this thing out, you know, that, that, that the heathen can have this inheritance. Man, the Lord's going to destroy y'all. Y'all tripping wait to the end to, to try to switch up and, and now trim your way to seek love your ass is going to be destroyed man the reunion and the reunion of judah and israel okay this is uh the point of the reunion of judah and israel ezekiel 37 and 21 say unto them thus said the lord behold i will take the children of israel from among the heathen whether they are gone and I will gather them on every side and I will bring them into their own land. See that? The, 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 the point of us being brought back together through Yahweh Shai is to be brought back to that promised land and rule out of the garden eastward in Eden. And no heathen will have any access to that rulership, to that promise. Okay? The kingdom won't be left to other people. This is the book of Ezekiel 37 and 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, who's going to be established, all right, by Yahweh Shai. And they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Okay? Let's read this in the NLT. I never read that in there. And my servant David will be their king, and they will only have one shepherd. They will obey my regulations and be careful to keep my decrees because the law is going to be in us. And they shall dwell in a land that I've given unto Jacob. See, my servant, where your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. See, and my servant David shall be their prince forever. My servant David shall be their prince forever. See, so it's nothing you can do. So when we return to this land, let's go back to the book. All right. Of Zechariah. Eight. All right. Zechariah eight. So the, the streets, when we get back to Jerusalem, 
which is the starting point of the promised land. We're going to part inheritance amongst the 12 tribes and it's going to be nothing but love and peace. Zechariah 8 and 6. Thus said the Lord of hosts, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of his people in these days, which is how we're going to all be brought back through a remnant. Should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, said the Lord of hosts? Okay. Thus said the Lord of hosts, behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. See, what was not it told to, to, to Jacob that your seed will be spread to the east and to the west and to the north, the south? And I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and they shall be my people and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. So when you get Genesis 35. In 10, this is in the NLT. I didn't mean to put it in the NLT, but let's do it. Saying your name is Jacob, but you will not be called Jacob any longer. Your name will be called Israel. So God renamed him Israel, Yasha Allah, and God said, I am El Shaddai, or Allah Shadya, God Almighty. That means what? A terrible demon-like power because of the, the vicious acts. That was a title given to the Most High. It's not his name, but that's a title. God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. You will become a great nation, even many nations, kings, will be among your descendants the kings of judah <laughs> all right the king david all right which were your came from that lineage and i will give you the land i once gave abraham and isaac yes i will give it to you and your descendants after you and through yahweh will that seed receive all of these blessings and promises man it will be through his blood that sealed the deal. All right. Now, let's get Luke 3 and 29 real quick. So as you can see, he's going to bring, he's going to save. And how is he going to save? Through Yahweh Shai, his people from the east country and the west country. What does Genesis 28 say? And I'm going back, I'm hitting these points for a reason. And we'll keep honing it in. We got a few more and we'll close it out. Okay. Uh, uh, Genesis 28 and uh, what was that? Uh, 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth and thou shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So that's talking about the Israelites. And a lot of people try to say, well, see, the, all of the families. No, 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 no. Just talking about the Israelites. Okay. Let's get Luke. The uh, third chapter. Luke 3 and 29. No, not Luke 3 and 29. Hold up. 13 and 29 so lock you. <clears throat> Luke 13 and 29 so lock you, it says Luke 13 and 28 there shall be a weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye see Abraham Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out okay and that's those wicked those of the circumcision who rejected Yahweh Shai Okay, they ain't going to be of that first dominion. They're going to be destroyed. Okay, and they shall come from east and from west and from north and from south. And so sit down in the kingdom of the most high. Those who are of the faith. As we went into a parable the other day. The children of the kingdom shall be thrashed out. All right, the, 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 the wicked Jews. All right. But ultimately, the Gentiles will be brought in through faith. Those heathen, uncircumcised heathen, just as Abram was uncircumcised and justified by faith. Well, the, 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 the children of the promise would be those who were justified by faith. OK. And behold, uh, there are last which shall be first and there are which shall. Well, let me read it. And behold. 
there are last which shall be first. Let's read this in another. Okay. And note this. Some who seem least important will now be the greatest then, the Gentiles. And some who are greatest now will be the least important then. All right? Because you're going to have greatest and least in the kingdom. You see that? <laughs> and, and and those uh, wicked Jews who rejected Yahweh Shai and never repented. Okay, the, 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 when it when it when the kingdom is set up, all right. When they're brought back in, they're gonna they're not gonna be in that position of authority. The remnant, starting with, of course, Yahweh Shai and the one forty four and the large multitude, those will be the one. And we're gonna show you that that large multitude is speaking to Israelites. Now let's go to, um, Genesis. 13 and 16 again real quick I want to let's hit this point that I was told to Abraham Genesis 13 and 16 and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall thy seed also be numbered see so the 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 seed of Abraham Isaac and Jacob will be as the dust of the earth that it cannot be numbered keep that in mind let's go to Genesis 32 and 12 Let's get Genesis 32 and 12. Now, this is, you know, when uh, Jacob was meeting back up with Esau after all of the years. After Jacob got that blessing, you know, the way he got it with the help of his mother, Rebecca. You know, Esau was pissed off and wanted to kill him. So Jacob ran for many years. I think close to 20 years he was away from Esau. So this is when he's meeting back up with him. And vocab and them tried to use this story going into the 33rd chapter as a means to say, well, Esau can be saved. No, Jacob was very cautious. He knew and understood Esau wanted to kill him. Jacob knew. So this is what he's saying. As he's meeting back up with Esau, Genesis 32 and 11, deliver me, I pray thee from the hand of my brother, the hand of Esau, for I fear lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. So look, listen to what Jacob says. And thou said, I will surely do thee good. You told me you're going to do me good and make my seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered. So basically, Jacob is holding the most high to his promise. So he's like, if you allow Esau to put me to death, then this blessing, how, how are we going to get this blessing? <laughs> so the, look, the, 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 it was a lot of faith tied to the works of our fathers, man. Here it is, you know, him and his mother, you know, had a scheme to get the blessing. Now, you know, Esau wanted to kill him. He ran off in Genesis, the 28th chapter. Went on a, a, a journey, all kind of stuff. Then he's meeting back up with him. He's like, look, Lord, deliver me from this crazy ass Esau. You told me, let's read this in the NLT. But you promised me you will surely treat. I will surely treat you kindly and will multiply your descendants until they become as numerous as the sands among the seashore. Too many to count. That was the promise given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when you get Revelation 7, all of the families of the earth are going to be blessed. Because the remnant is going to be accounted. Okay. The remnant is going to be accounting real quick. Let's get uh, Genesis 5 or Genesis 15 real quick. It's crazy. It was already here. Genesis 15 and 5. Genesis 15 and 5. And he brought him forth the broad and said, Now look towards heaven and tell all the stars, if thou be able to number them, and he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in Yahweh and he counted him for righteousness. So the, 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 this is what was just told to Abraham. This is Abram. Before his name was changed to Abraham, he, he, he said, look, your seed is going to be as the sand of the sea. Okay, this, as, as the stars of heaven. Which cannot be numbered. Right. Keep that in mind. All right, you're not going to be able to number them. 
Okay. Let's go to Isaiah 10. Isaiah 10. And 20. A remnant will return and shall come to pass in that day. The remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. They would have faith and turn to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, but shall stay upon Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel in truth. That's going to take faith. That's how the elect are going to be justified. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, okay, which was promised unto Abraham and, and, and Isaac and Jacob, all right, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness, okay? And that decree is that, all right, it was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that that seed would eventually get that promise. And it's through Yahweh Shai that the families of the earth is going to be blessed. For the Lord God shall make a consumption even determined in the midst in the in the midst of the land. Let's NLT this thing. Yes, the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, has already decided to destroy the entire land. All right, which that's going to happen to America. And out of that, the elect are going to be delivered. Okay? So the consumption. The creed shall overflow of righteousness is the elect being delivered. Okay, and brought back to the land of Israel. And that's going to be synonymous with the destruction of Babylon the Great. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Um, let's see here. That's that's the point there. All right. That's the point there. The Israel is going to be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant shall return. And that remnant. When you get Revelation, the seven chapter is right here. Okay. The 144,000, which is the governing body. All right. And then Revelation 7 and 9. And after this, all right, you're going to have the 12,000 out of each tribe, the governing body. And after this, lo. A great multitude which no man could number. Remember that? <laughs> what did Jacob say? Genesis 32 and 12. And thou, you told me I will surely do thee good and will make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. These are Israelites, man. Revelation 7 and 9, and after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations, see, as we would be scattered in kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palms in their hands. See that? And again, we know that this word, all right. <laughs> all right because the, the the nations the ethnicity the ethnos which we've been going into that word a lot all right which sometimes this word can be used for actual heathen but it's dealing all right with the family line of israel when you deal with the promise the blessings the good graces of yahweh bashim yahushai Okay, a multitude of individuals of the same nature or gene. Okay, the human family, a tribe, people, group in the Old Testament, foreign nations not worshiping the true God, pagans, Gentiles. Okay, which our people became Gentiles. That ethnicity, that line became what? Heathen. But the heathen would be what? Justified by faith. So. We also need to look up this word kindreds, nations and kindreds. OK, the kindreds are the families. OK. Which. The word is fule. A tribe in the New Testament's all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. OK. And that's 
who the promises were given to. Okay. To the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but through a remnant of that seed, which would be as the, you know, the, the large, and which cannot be numbered and measured as this scripture is talking about, you know, the, this is that remnant. As you go here, this is talking about Israelites. This fulfills the promise. This fulfills the promise of the families of the earth being blessed. <laughs> when you read it, it says they was clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and they cried with a loud voice saying salvation. See, salvation is for the Hebrew Israelites, man. The elect out of the Hebrew Israelites. The seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to our power, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb. Okay. And the angel stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne and their faces, uh, the throne of their, on their faces and worshiped the most high saying, Amon, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and our, uh, honor and power and might be unto our power forever and ever okay and these who are in these white robes are those who came out of great tribulation okay they shall hunger no more thirst no more the lamb shall feed them so they're going to have the law statutes and commandments written in their inward part God shall wipe away tears from their eyes. See, who's he going to do that to? Let's get the book of Isaiah, the 25th chapter. Okay, he's going to wipe away tears from off all their eyes. These Israelites that are gathered from all of these different places, man. Genesis 25 and 8 he will swallow up death and victory and the Lord God shall wipe away the tears from off of all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth okay for the Lord has spoken it you see so the Lord is going to take away the tears from his people and it shall be said in that day, lo, this is our power. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is Yahweh. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. You see that? <laughs> Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36. What is the Lord going to do? Speaking of the Israelites, all right, who were scattered among these heathen. Ezekiel 36 and 19, and I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed throughout all the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them. But what is he going to do? He's going to renew New Jerusalem. Let's get to the point Ezekiel 36 and 23 and I will sanctify my great name which was profaned among the heathen how did these Israelites profane the Lord's name among the heathen by worshiping their idols see but then he's going to be sanctified in them among the heathen among these nations where the Israelites were scattered all right by great works and deliverance which ye have profaned in the midst of them then the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh Save the Lord when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. How? Well, I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. See? Verse 28, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers and ye shall be my people and I will be your God. Okay? So going back to the book of uh, Revelation, the seventh chapter. A great multitude which cannot be numbered. This is the remnant. Okay? The, the 144,000 in a large multitude make up the remnant. 
Okay? <laughs> this, this fulfills the promise that was told to Abraham. That his seed would be as, as a large number and, 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 and receive this land. This is it. Are you getting it? And the, 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 this large multitude cried with a loud voice, salvation to our God. What does the scripture say? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. See? We sit up on the throne and to the lamb. So these are Israelites. <laughs> okay? That, are, that, are, that fulfill the promise that was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? The heathen will be justified by faith, man. Okay? But it's all tied to the Israelites. Galatians 3 and 8. And the scripture for seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith in who Yahweh Shai preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed, those who are tied to the faith of Abraham. So then they which are of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. It's not about the keeping of the law. It's about faith for as many as are under the works of the law. All right. Which many of the wicked Jews, the wicked scribes and Pharisees who were raised in the customs of the law were, they were thinking it's about keeping of the law under the curse for it is written curses. Everyone that continue it. Okay. Not in all the things which are written in the book of this law. So if you, are going to boast in being tied to the first covenant, then you're under the curse because if you break the laws under that, you're under the curse. See, but see, Yahweh Shai came to redeem us from the curse of the law. Let's keep reading it. <laughs> and who was the law given to the Israelites? You have not dealt so with any other nation. Okay, so this is talking about the Israelites. The book of Galatians was written to Israelites scattered in Galatia, in these various different regions, where, where, where the, the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners who were scattered, were brought back in through faith. Okay? But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of the Most High. For it is evident that the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man, all right, that do it them shall live so your your life under that first covenant was predicated upon the keeping of those laws yahweh shai have redeemed us from the curse of the law who was under the curse of the law the israelites okay we're still under those curses unto this day but see through yahweh shai okay we're not condemned by the breaking of those laws Rather, we are justified by our faith in him. This is all to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh Shai have redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, as it is written, Curses everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, who were a no people, but now are a people, through the faith in Yahweh Shai. Okay? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Yahweh Shai. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. <laughs> you can keep reading. And we went through all of that. We were just reading some of that. Let's get Hosea and end it off, man. Hosea, the first chapter. See how these scriptures, when you go line up online, precept on precept, it hits. Hosea 1 and 9, then God said, call his name lo me for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. This is what the child was to be named by this harlot, this child by this harlot, symbolic of Israel. Okay? Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. <laughs> and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall it be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. Then shall the children of Israel and the children of Judah be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. Okay. And they shall come up out of the land for great is the day of Yazra'ala, which means the seed of the power, which is the seed that's going to what? Receive the promises 
all right, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through Yahawashah's blood, okay? So that's the point, okay? That's the point, and we're going to keep going through these points. We're going to keep nailing these points home. We got more, all right, but I'm going to leave that there. The point was made. This concludes the lesson. Hopefully, I will edify it. On to the next. Shalom.